All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and set up our world famous APD2 sluice box. This has been the staple, one of the most popular sluices we ever built in the history of our company. We've been selling the model very similar to this one probably since uh, the early 60s. So we've been building it quite a while, and over the years they've gotten better and better, you know, minor changes, but it's hard to beat the old standby, you know, just with the big wide trough. You've got basically, I think, about a 17 inch wide trough here. You've got about 36 inches long, and you've got, I think the overall length is about 51, 52 inches long, hence the part number A52. So I'm gonna set it up. I have to do a little more prep work to get my my uh, location, but we're pretty lucky. This is kind of an ideal spot to set it up in. Let me just shift this one out of the way. Tricky to set up. You can see it might just teeter on there. Yeah. I think I got this rock as a little bit. Oh, that's that's one. It's my way right there. Okay, now I can do this. It's about the right ballpark, isn't it? What do you think? Looks good. Okay. Make sure your bee is thrown in Yeah, I just got to get my hand out of the way. Yeah, it's kind of centered in. Oh no, the gun is coming down here. What do you think, Pat? It's good. Good enough. Well, yep, I think that's good enough. Yeah. All right, so let's let me grab some material here. You want this? Let me grab, let me just transfer this into a small bucket that I can do. Show them how you can do shovel pulls from six feet away. Into it. That's Pat's job. So I'm just getting my material wet here so I can feed it. Well, I'm getting it wet so that I, my gold doesn't float on. If you took a, if you take like a dry sand like this, and if you feed it, watch how it just floats on top of the surface. Well, this is dropping, but some of it will float. But if it's wet, it sinks right down to the bottom. So we get plenty of water here. Yeah, I can tell this thing's moving a lot more material. It's nice to have that big white trough in there because you can feed it side to side and it just keeps on cooking. So like I said, this sluice has been one of the most famous sluices in the world for, for decades. And you also got the expandability of changing yep. that sluice into a high banker. A dredge. A dredge, whatever. A trommel sluice that you can turn it into. But look at the amount of material I can pass through this thing. Hell, I just ran this bucket in about probably, whoa, in probably about a, a, a few minutes. With that first, with the A51, I probably took about five, six minutes to run, run the first bucket. With this one, then the A51, I could run it in probably two or three minutes. I could probably run this one in about a minute. There's no problem. It's nice having that big trough in the front, too. All right, let's get some more material. Did you take that out of this? Yeah. Amazing versatility. And yards. I mean, this thing, I can count a lot of material through this. This is kind of sandy, loose material here. So it's, it's already been pre-classified. Yeah, it's been pre-classified. But uh, we don't, we'll find out in a minute. I'll be able to tell you in a second if there's any color in here or not. I think all the gold is coming from right over there near those big roots. But it's worth a, it's all worth a try, trying different spots. You know, one of my, one of my friends, John Lowe right there. He, <laughs> <laughs> say hello, John. He's got an interesting technique. What's up, man? <laughs> he does mainly panning. He doesn't do a lot of sluicing, but he, his, his thought process is good. He'll actually take like a stretch of river and Take a pan, pan sample, pan, you know, take a sample pan, sample pan, sample pan. Even if he finds gold in that second or third spot, he'll keep checking all those further spots out to see which one turn out the higher yields of gold. And that's pretty smart. 
a lot of guys that just go out and they find gold in the first couple pans and they just dedicate themselves to a dead hole. The trick is you gotta move around, hit and move, hit and move. Always keep sampling as you do it. Now I do. Red square, there you go, the color. You can see the red square. Okay, he's classifying all the material down keep, keep that material to a coming, half boys. inch I'm minus. This good material now. I think I see a little color on the mat, Pat. Yeah, well, it's a good little hole there. Good. All those boulders are creating a low pressure zone. From when it was laid there, which was a high pressure. <laughs> yeah, see here in California, we're having like record rains. I mean, all winter long, we have like, like a, a 50, 60 foot snowpack in Mammoth and 20, 30 feet in the Sierras. So all these rivers in Northern California have just had this massive erosion. Hillsides, roads, banks, rivers changing direction. So the odds are that, that this is going to be one of the best years we've had in prospecting in, in California in, in very potentially decades. I don't think we had this much rain since like 85 or something, yeah, 1985, or before. 84, something like that. So, all right, give me, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing good color. This is good material. Let's keep feeding this in here. Yeah, I'll get you another bucket. I love this, this uh, when you have the bucket, and you have everything full of water, it just goes so much faster. There you go. That's how you do it. All right. Aren't you supposed to look through the screen to see if there's any big pieces? I would have. <laughs> I would normally, but you know, you gotta keep feeding the sluice with the high production yeah. sluice right High production, we gotta go. This thing needs some serious weight right Then here. we need a high production digger. <laughs> Rock the bucket and swirl it around in a figure eight. Oh, yeah. All right, one more after me. There we go. Now we're rocking. Just like Jeff says, can't be afraid to get wet. No, you can't. Here. Yeah, it's running a lot faster now, Pat. Now we did like kind of a minor reset. reposition. A lot of black sand, it's kind of, you can see it stalling in the sluice. Sure is nice and peaceful out here today. God, isn't it? Beautiful. And then people don't realize, you know, prospecting is about the adventure of it all. We're out here, we're having a good time, we're going to have a little lunch, we're, we're in some beautiful country, a little hiking. Maybe a margarita for Father's Day. <laughs> enjoying, the, enjoying the last little bit of nature that we got. Yeah. But you can see, I see the indicator mat. I see a little bit of color, not much, but a little bit. And I see the, that I see green carpet, expanded metal. So I know everything's working right. And just like you, like you're supposed to, I see kind of a medium to a heavy load in the first riffle, a little lighter, a little lighter. 
but I know all my gold's in that first two riffles. Unlike some of those other pieces of, of like the, the little pocket catches and the rubber riffles, they just don't hold on to that gold like this thing. The, the other types of riffles will constantly migrate the gold down the riffle. The gold stays in one spot. Once it gets locked in and it gets caught by those fibers, it doesn't go anywhere. And I, a lot of people like the other kind of stuff, but when I've actually tested it, very disappointing. This old, old school shit kicks ass on everything. I love it. So, uh, Again, and you can see the box is working like it's supposed to. Bucket. All right. Sir. Okay, I'll help you clean this out. Right, Pat. Bigger sleeve, so it's a little bit more work. I'll get, a, I'll get the pan so we can do it. Rock in the bucket. Okay. Let me get the box. Okay, and a uh, gold pan. Small one? Small one. There you go. I see, yeah, I see a little bit of the indicator. Yep, I did. You got one more here, Pat. Maybe one more. <laughs> all right. I think you got it all right now. Okay. Make sure we wash off the riffles real good. Sometimes that gold will stand right on the top of the riffle. Good enough. Got right. a metal screen. You have to be careful when you do pull your carpet out and you set it in the screen bed. I have seen them wash away, so you gotta keep an eye on it at least. Roll up the carpet. Yep. Slide that in. Anything else on the indicator mat? No, I think we're clean, Pat. We're good. Always wash off the side of the sleeves. Yep. Okay, we're good. All right, I'll, I'll put this back together and you can go ahead and pan that out. So what's the riffle on this? It's a Hungarian style. I've walked up, that'd be funny. Hey, so what's the riffle on this? I don't know, but there's no, oh, it, ain't, it ain't a oh, metal sorry, detector. You almost got my nuts. That's how we could be washing it out. Again, opening up the pores and the carpet. Okay, how about that gold pan, Mark? The small one or the big one? That one's right. The old trusty SP14. I kind of like the smaller pan nowadays. Splash a little water in the bucket, does wonders. Clean as a whistle. You want me to pan it? You want John pan it, Pat? It takes too long. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> that's so funny. No, I that's know. funny. <laughs> no, that's a good pan. I've always. You know, me and Pat were up with another friend of ours about three, about three, four weeks ago when we were out there panning and sluicing up at our little secret spot. And uh, I was watching this guy pan. He's kind of new. It drove me nuts watching him pan so slow. You know, you lose, once you've done this for a long time, you kind of learn that you can be pretty fast. You can be quick about panning. You don't have to baby it. Hey, what is it? And there you go. Got some smooth gold. I got a piece of rough gold here. That's kind of an indicator that the gold hasn't traveled too far from the source. Sit here and baby it a little bit. Get that gold to climb. 
All right, let's get down to the other sluice. And that, now we'll start running some serious material. Now we'll be able to run some of that bank run material as well. Okay. All right, let's get on.